Hey guys, uh, Sunday afternoon. I've kind of been procrastinating a little bit. I have a pretty uh, significant period exam coming up on Wednesday, but uh, whatever. So I spent a good majority of uh, last night and this morning uh, refining this guy, the Cat Challenger MT875E. Um, pretty much what I did is I worked on the modeling a little bit, uh, worked on the hood, um, worked on baking in new textures, um, uh, added, uh, metal to the exhaust, I ba baked in the, uh, blinkers into the, into the model itself, it's not decal, um, added glass to the fenders over the brake lights, added, uh, a braided hose texture, uh, added metal, uh, textures, um, added rubber to the, a uh, rubber texture to the, uh, track wheels, um, rubber to the engine mounts, and, um, you can't really see it, but in the suspension, uh, in the main frame it has rubber as well. Um, metal texture for the, the steps here so now we're in the cab um, redid the cab added a lot of decals in here um, tweaked some things so you can uh, I'll zoom in here uh, have some buttons in the back here with your pop your, uh, your can holder um, we have I have yet to add in the IC functions. Oh yeah, and I redid the, these rear steps. Um, what else? We have our monitor over. How do you get a good view? Redid the monitor mount with a uh, cord. Uh, mirrors. You can see the mirrors outside and inside. Um, so it was just uh, tweaking the model. Oh, and uh, made the door so the door opens now. Um, I have my steering so it will telescope and rotate up, um, but I have yet to add in the uh, the scripts, the IC scripts, and the animations. So all it has now is um, a cab suspension. Uh, animation there as the beacons. So the cab suspension, I have the, everything part of the cab. Uh, so we have our main front lights. Uh, we have our indoor cab light. Uh, we have blinkers. These top blinkers uh, rotate around with the cab. As do the beacons, as do these rear lights. So we'll just go and um, play around with this a little bit. have our cruise control set pretty low. Let's put the hammer down. You can see the, our, the speed gauge. So I have everything pretty much swiveling on this uh, ripper as well. We'll use GPS. New course. Working north.
think I'll uh, redo the discs on this ripper eventually. Just make them nicer, not so uh, rookie, rookie like. see the cab, the cab will move, the mirrors are on the mainframe, so they won't move. about this build was definitely the hood it's because it's hard to get uh, nice pictures of a view like this and like a view a view like this and this view is pretty easy to find but just the pictures to use as reference for getting the proportions of the curves that was the hard part I ended up just kind of like eyeballing it the best I could Otherwise, the rest of it, the profile was pretty easy to do, front and back was pretty easy to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall not that difficult. The interior, interiors are definitely the hardest. sure if I would say the hardest but the amount of detail you have to put into this cab I mean you have to make it all hollow everything needs to be nice and aligned then uh, all the extra like detailing you have to put like all these buttons of the manual UV maps um, it's a lot of work um, but it's definitely well worth it to put in the time to get nice uh, contours textures Um, this isn't the most detailed cab. I spent most of my time modeling the frame and the engine and the tracks. Um, the last thing I got to was the interior, so I was kind of tired at that point. So spent maybe 10 to 12 hours going back and refining this model and doing the interior. Runs nice and smooth, sounds great, has uh, new custom uh, sound files on it. Really like that new metal, metal plate texture. I gotta put it on these little engine mounts here. Uh, these little steps. So it's kind of frustrating when you realize you forget these little nitpicky uh, details. And like these bolts here underneath, I forgot to retexture them to the frame. They're still that black. I like it that these, uh, the textures are not flickering anymore, and I believe it was, I changed how I was doing my normal maps, and, um, they no longer flicker. So, I'm gonna have to go and redo my normal maps on a lot of my other models to reduce the flickering. Or maybe it's the pet, no, still, that, no, still. This Ripper uses my old normal map technique, and uh, I have new new normal maps on this, and so far there's 
not a single flicker. So, learn something new every day. So this is a pretty solid primary tillage rig. Uh, this can also be um, uh, pull my 50 foot Krauss field cultivator for spring. Um, I'd probably hook up the the, ni the 9RT up to the DB120 for planting or still use my A370R. I have plans to actually make I'm not even. I'm not gonna make it from scratch this time. That's too much work since the parts already exist. I'm just gonna make an A370R uh, RT. I'm gonna use uh, Julian's tracks. Gonna use Ego's uh, hood and cab and interior. And then I'll just redo fuel tanks and uh, redo the frame a little bit and uh, have myself a nice uh, 8RT. I'm gonna redo my fast manufacturing tanks, but it won't be part of the body. Uh, the body it will be uh, a purchasable item that you can attach and refill, so it will have function. But this thing is awesome. I'm so happy with how this turned out this time. I was never happy um, with the old one, the textures on the old one, but it was just so much work to model it and texture it and. So I just took a break from it, did uh, some other projects, played played uh, the game a little bit, and then I just finally uh, was ready to use it again, and uh, in order to use it, I'd need to make all the adjustments, corrections, put in all the interior details. And, um, I think the modeling, the actual modeling itself, I probably have 50 hours on the model. 50 or 60 hours on the modeling itself, then I probably have, I don't know, probably 10 to 15 hours of messing around with textures and UV maps and materials and learning and watching videos and uh, basically experimenting with different burn techniques and different filter filters. Um, uh, the end game it didn't take long. It's pretty easy to script in these uh, single component mods, um, and then uh, I don't know, I'd say all together so far from when I first started to point to now, it's probably like around the 60, 70, 80 hours into this model between. Researching pictures, um, finding nice pictures, setting up for proportions, adjusting textures, making UV maps for decals. Um, so it's a lot of time that goes into modeling and modeling well, putting in a lot of details, uh, importing, exporting, seeing how it looks in Blender. Applying all the modifiers, smooth modifiers, edge loop, or loop cuts, or whatever it is, and selecting, deselecting components. Um, when you when you bake in textures like like these uh, lights, you can see it's not the best quality. I mean, it still looks okay, but it's not that HD, that really high definition you use if you don't include the decal as part of the UV map that you bake. Um, so pretty much all these details here are not part of the body. They're all like, uh, some people call them ad strips, but it's just separate from the UV map and burn so you get a better, you know, a higher resolution image. But I'm really happy that I figured out what was the cause of that flickering. Uh, like a 
like a bolt texture and I have stainless steel on my my center console here. Overall it uh, turned out to be a pretty uh, great looking uh, Challenger. I always wanted a nice Challenger. Um, a nice uh, crawler crawling if you can't tell by now, I love tracks. I love tracks on just about everything. Um, and uh, I'm not really like a fan of Caterpillar. I prefer John Deere over a cat any day. But uh, it's always nice to hear that Cummins engine and uh, just a big yellow piece of machinery. Not to mention, it's really cool. I mean, so many odd angles. Look at this steering wheel for example. Like That's the most outrageous steering wheel. So I also noticed that I haven't downloaded or used um, these new cloths, uh, Zerion and uh, Jaguar, have been released. Um, I don't know how many people are on that modding team, but they did a really amazing job. That hood, I love the hood on that, uh, what is it, 4000? It's, it's amazing. I remember, I've seen um, on YouTube, there's a great channel called Big Tractor Power, and they have these MT, you know, 800s running around, they have 9Rs pulling the big equipment, then they have um, all kinds of Lexion combines and CAC combines and deer, you know, they have all the big, big equipment and some equipment I've never even seen before, like um, Porsche Anderson planters, uh, I don't think they're really big, I think that's uh, Porsche, it's, uh, it's just the European manufacturers trying to get a foothold in the states but those uh, no-till seat air seaters are huge and they just fly it's like high-speed seating and then they do like deep deep vertical tillage and all the big cool equipment so you can see the suspension work a little bit um, So I'll probably hook up to the uh... oh here's my Kinsey. Kinsey needs work too, but oh, this is another thing. Uh, finally got a. Washable draper header now. Just run this without the anhydrous tank. I'm gonna wash this.
just so we can uh, work the suspension a little bit. I'll just fold this back up so you guys can see what the timing's like. Um, Now that we're on plowed terrain, we can really see the steering work, the cap suspension. You see it bouncing all over the place. So this is a nice feature of the 1.3 patch. Just playing, just playing with this cultivator. This thing's just bouncing all over the place. It's great. See the whole frame moving. The Fuel tanks moving.
Thanks for watching.